This film is a summary of our new understanding of the causes of cardiovascular disease. Arterial calcification, the cause of heart attack and stroke, is an early form of the Salossi disease, scurvy. Here we're looking inside an artery, shown in cross-section as an aid to understanding. Two important structures are visible. Firstly, the outer ring of the arterial wall, consisting mainly of collagen and other connective tissue molecules. This ring of connective tissue is covered with a cell layer, which represents the real barrier between the bloodstream and the arterial wall. These cells are also known as endothelial cells. In vitamin deficiency, particularly vitamin C deficiency, two important structural changes occur in the arterial wall. Firstly, the connective tissue ring begins to dissolve because due to the vitamin C deficiency, not enough collagen molecules can be formed anymore. Secondly, the vitamins are also lacking as bioenergy substances for the cells, causing loss of function and shrinkage. Between the individual cells, millions of microscopically small cracks form. If vitamin C is completely lacking in humans, the arterial wall breaks open within four to six months and blood leaks out of the bloodstream. Now we can understand how the sailors of earlier centuries died after four to six months of a diet deficient in vitamin C. They literally bled to death. In this sequence of pictures, you can see how similar the development of arterial calcification is to the processes involved in scurvy. Nowadays, a total lack of vitamin C is very rare, but nearly everyone suffers from a dietary vitamin deficiency over decades. The complete breaking open of the arterial wall and subsequent bleeding to death, as occurs in scurvy, is an exceptional occurrence. What actually happens is that over many years and decades, the arterial wall gradually becomes weaker. Here too, millions of tiny cracks develop in the arterial wall. Because this all happens more gradually than in scurvy, that is over years and decades, the body has time to react. The liver produces extra repair substances such as lipoproteins, small particles which transport fats, shown here in yellow. These penetrate between the cells into the arterial wall and try to repair it. If this process continues, more and more blood fats and other repair substances penetrate, causing the formation of the much feared deposits. If this plaque forms in the coronary vessels, this eventually blocks the coronary arteries and causes a heart attack. In the arteries which supply the brain with blood, these deposits eventually cause a stroke. In the next sequence of pictures, you can see the healing effect of vitamin C on the arterial wall. If there's an adequate supply of vitamin C, these vitamin molecules penetrate the damaged areas of the arterial wall via the bloodstream and repair it. Vitamin C stimulates the production of collagen molecules and the collagen ring, which gives the blood vessel its main stability, regenerates. The microscopic cracks between the endothelial cells also heal. Just as the damage caused by scurvy can be reversed by an optimal supply of vitamin C, deposits in the arterial walls can also be broken down. This doesn't lead to a complete breakdown of the deposits in every case, but these self-healing forces are activated in those parts of the arterial wall which are capable of regeneration. As occurs during the healing phase in scurvy, as the deposits are naturally broken down, the vitamin C molecules present in the diet penetrate the arterial wall via the bloodstream and repair it. The deposits of further blood fats and other repair substances in the arterial wall thereby become superfluous. Not only that, the fat particles which are already deposited there are flushed out of the arterial wall. This breakdown takes place molecule for molecule over a period of several months. It is therefore a biological process rather than a mechanical one, in contrast to the balloon catheter and other mechanical procedures whereby pieces of tissue often block the bloodstream, the natural vitamin-aided breakdown is a gentle risk-free process. The blood lipid molecules which are flushed out are transported in the bloodstream to the liver and burnt up there, that is, disposed of in a natural way.
In the breakdown of deposits in the arterial wall, not only vitamin C, but also the amino acids lysine and proline play an important part. These amino acids form a type of Teflon layer around the blood lipid molecules and contribute to their release from the deposits. In this way, the deposits in the arterial walls are gradually broken down in a natural manner. This natural breakdown of the arterial calcification has now been confirmed in clinical studies. In these studies, the optimal provision of vitamin programs developed by us ended arterial calcification within one year. In some cases, there was a complete breakdown of the deposits. If you look at these pictures, it soon becomes clear that a new medical epoch has begun and that bypass surgery and balloon catheters will rapidly become things of the past. This film shows the development of cancer and the outstanding significance of vitamin C and lysine in preventing the spread of this disease. Here we're looking into a cell which has been cut open to make viewing easier and has been greatly magnified under the microscope. The violet ball in the background is the cell nucleus which contains the cell's genetic makeup and is responsible for controlling all its metabolic processes. The red structure, shaped like a spaceship, is the production plant of the cell. Here, enzymes and all other cell products are made. The information produced comes from the cell nucleus. The light blue structures in the foreground are the power stations of the cell, the mitochondrions. These dark structures are collagen molecules which produce the connective tissue in the body. A cancer cell now gives the command from the cell nucleus to the production plant to produce enough enzymes, also known as biocatalysts. These have one principal function and that is the digestion of surrounding connective tissue. This allows the proliferation of the cancer cell. These structures, presented as small red gnawing balls, are really enzymes or biocatalysts. They have the unique ability specifically to digest collagen fibers and are therefore also known as collagenases. If enough collagen molecules are destroyed, the cancer cell can move freely through the connective tissue, which is otherwise impenetrable, and thus the cancer can spread. In this section of the film, we can see how a cancerous growth forms in the liver. Here again, you can see the schematic cross-section of a liver cell, which has been greatly magnified. There are always two prerequisites to the development of cancer. Firstly, the cancer cell must divide in order to form a growth or tumor. Secondly, enough collagenases or gnawing enzymes must be formed to digest the surrounding connective tissue and thus allow the proliferation of the cancerous growth. Here you can see this presented schematically. The red gnawing enzymes divide the collagen molecules and thus the surrounding connective tissue. At the same time, the cancer cells increase in number and can spread easily throughout the dissolved connective tissue. The development of the cancer has begun. In the next section of the film, we can see how a parent growth spreads out from the liver and finally forms a subsidiary tumour or metastasis in the lung. Firstly, let's look again at the cancer cell in the cross section of the liver.
the collagen structures are destroyed and the cancer cell breaks away from the cancerous group and makes its way to the next blood vessel in the liver. Once it has reached here, the cancer cell uses the same collagenesis, that is, gnawing cells, to eat its way into the small blood vessels of the liver. The cancer cell penetrates the blood vessel and is carried away in the bloodstream. In the lung, the bloodstream branches out further, which facilitates the adhesion of the cancer cells to the lung's small capillary vessels. With the help of the collagenesis, their biological cutting tools, the cancer cells now eat their way from the inside to the outside through the wall of the pulmonary blood vessels. The original liver cancer cell is now in a position to lodge itself in the lung tissue and form a secondary tumour, the lung metastasis. The original parent growth in the liver has thus formed a secondary growth in the lung. The next part of the film shows the progress made in cellular medicine in the curbing of cancer. Vitamin C ensures an optimal production of collagen molecules and thus stabilizes the surrounding connective tissue. Vitamin C alone hampers the spread of cancer cells. A further important development in cellular medicine is the use of the amino acid lysine. If this naturally occurring substance is absorbed in large quantities, it's capable of neutralizing collagenesis, the gnawing enzymes. The lysine molecules, which are shown here in green, fit exactly into the anchoring grounds of the collagenesis and, to put it bluntly, shut them up. This prevents the collagenesis from digesting the connective tissue. It's thus possible to slow or completely prevent the spread of cancer in a perfectly natural way. Already, this new therapeutic approach of cellular medicine is also being used successfully against various forms of cancer.